Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have a good one for you today. In Newsweek, the headline is Richard Dawkins accused of bigotry over Allahu Akbar tweet, prompting atheist debate on Islam. Renowned atheist author and longtime Oxford University professor Richard Dawkins was the target of bigotry accusations after a tweet about the phrase Allahu Akbar. Dawkins has published several perennial books mocking all religions throughout his long career, but the English evolutionary biologist is now being labeled a racist by some on social media for a Monday tweet showing him outside the Winchester Cathedral in Hampshire, England. His tweet compared the pleasance of hearing Christian church bells to that of the aggressive-sounding Muslim phrase called takbar in Arabic, meaning God is great. The tweet immediately drew condemnation and discussions on Islamophobia. Well, there he is sitting in front of the cathedral and his tweet, listening to the lovely bells of Winchester, one of our great medieval cathedrals, so much nicer than the aggressive sounding Allahu Akbar, or is that just my cultural upbringing? Dawkins wrote in a Monday tweet, the Twitter photo and caption posted by Dawkins, 77, prompted an intense debate on whether criticism of certain religions is prejudice or simply a challenging opinion. You can't sit on a park bench on a sunny day without turning it into something Islamophobic, responded Amanath Amarasinum a senior research fellow at the London-based Institute for Strategic Dialogue. Another Twitter user rebuked that opinion, positing a phobia is an irrational fear of something. The word Islamophobia doesn't make sense. Islamophobia is a word created to silence criticism of Islam. Much of the debate around Dawkins' tweet centers on whether Islam is given preferential treatment versus other world religions. He merely states he dislikes something because it sounds aggressive to him. That's his liberty. It's not prejudice. It's criticism. Or are you suggesting that people are obligated to like religion? Tweeted Max Wooderman. The author of The God Delusion and The Selfish Gene has traditionally targeted all religious institutions with his atheist criticisms, but his negative comments on Islam in particular have repeatedly led to accusations of hate speech. In 2017, Dawkins remarked to a crowd at the Cheltenham Science Festival in Clouthshire, England, that Islam is the most evil religion in the world. Berkeley, California radio station KPFA, I covered this on a video last year, canceled Dawkins' book event and condemned his views on Islam for having offended and hurt so many people. But Dawkins has repeatedly clarified that he does not view individual Muslims as bad. Rather, they are victims of what he sees as a regressive religious institution. Dawkins has reiterated his belief that it is hypocritical for his critics to ridicule him over his comments about Islam, but say nothing when he regularly insults Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, and all other organized faiths. In response to his ban from the Berkeley radio station appearance, Dawkins told The Guardian, I have criticized the appalling misogyny and homophobia of Islam. I have criticized the murdering of apostates for no crime other than their disbelief. Far from attacking Muslims, I understand, as perhaps you do not, that Muslims themselves are the prime victims of the oppressive cruelties of Islamism, especially Muslim women. Which is true. Because I think that a lot of, of the problems that the poorer people have may be brought upon them by religion. Um, I don't deny that religion can be consoling to them. What I'm suggesting is that they may be actually oppressed by religion. I think, for example, of the place of women in Islamic societies uh, where they are hideously oppressed by uh, religious um, forces. I am known as a frequent critic of Christianity and have never been deplatformed for that. Why do you give Islam a free pass? Why is it fine to criticize Christianity but not Islam? Because these are the regressive leftists. 
and for some reason they think that Islam is all feministy and progressive. These people that are going on all these progressive marches, the joke is let's let's send them to Iran or Saudi Arabia and, and their marches will be off the end of a tall building. But Dawkins' indiscriminate rebuke of all religions was not registered by thousands of Twitter users who focused on the auditory affability of Azan or Muslim-led Islamic calls to worship. Dear Richard, <laughs> Professor Gad Sad remarked sarcastically, remember that word sarcastically, Arabic is my mother tongue when properly translated Allahu Akbar means we love all people but hold a special fondness for Jews, women, and gays. Don't worry, it's a message of love, tolerance, and liberalism. More about that in a second. Dawkins has not yet responded to the criticism, but his social media prowess is widely considered ahead of its time. Dawkins is credited with coining the term meme in his 1976 best-selling book, The Selfish Gene. So Gad Sad reacts to the article using his sarcasm. He says, look, Ma, you were right all along. My sarcasm is truly lethal. Robert Spencer reacting... Newsweek reports sarcastic explanations of Allahu Akbar as a message of love as if it were serious. And then someone has to explain to Gad Sad it means God is great. It's not about anyone else but God and his messengers. Peace be upon them. And which Gad, Professor Gad Sad replies, and Einstein explaining to me what Allahu Akbar means and in doing so is utterly blind to the most obvious sarcasm in the universe. But what are these other people in the world saying about Richard Dawkins? Here on Yahoo UK News, Richard Dawkins sparks a backlash with tweet about aggressive sounding Muslim call to prayer. So they introduce it the same as the last article. His comments have sparked a backlash online with angry retorts pouring in from people across the world. Let's see who all these people are. They include Fatima Bhutta, niece of former Pakistani Prime Minister Benizer Bhutto, who replied to the tweet with her own message saying, No, it's your bigotry. There it is right there. Actor Catherine Russell described the tweet as horribly disappointing, adding, And I say this as a huge admirer of your thinking and writing shame. Journalist Ash Sarkar branded the biologist a tedious old racist, while Guardian journalist Aditya Chakraborty described the comment as just prejudice. And here they are. Here's those comments. Turns out the God delusion was just the collective insistence that Richard Dawkins was a philosopher and not just a tedious old racist. And here's the other one. It's just prejudice mate we see all around us people running around screaming crying accusing islamophobia because someone dares criticizing the religion of peace richard dawkins although he does criticize the religion of peace as well as every other religion has a right to prefer one sound or music from one religion over the other if the bells in a cathedral are music to his ears, whereas the, the daily prayers of Islam is something he doesn't prefer or bothers him, that's his right. He's not being racist. He's not discriminating. It's his preference. So knock it off. I'm going to end this with a few words by Douglas Murray on the offense regarding Islam. Does anyone honestly think that they're likely to be killed for making a joke about Jesus Christ. No, of course not. There is, there's the life of Brian. There's countless films about well, lots it. Lots of people are equally offended we by live, that. Well, of they? course they're offended, and they have a right to be offended to it, uh, by it. But what happens when one religion manages to have a totalitarian hold over freedom of speech it because people are genuinely concerned about criticizing it? There is a problem, and that is an unequal situation. You say one religion will be absolutely allowed to be, to be let free from all of these, uh, uh, these Harris, criticisms. Harris, Harris. Well, then, about giving Douglas Murray the the last word on this subject, I still have a few things to say. And it's about this outrage culture. In and of itself, 
is not the most worrying thing in the world, but paired with the dangerous practices that is behind the imperialistic ideology of Islam, it can be most deadly. There is a reason that freedom of expression has become a hot topic in recent years. The stifling of free speech in the name of tolerance and multiculturalism is a recipe for disaster in a civilized world our world. Please take a moment to subscribe to this channel. Be sure to hit the notification bell if you want to know when I have new videos available and consider following this channel on social media. Links below. And so think about supporting what I'm doing on Patreon. I have some plans for projects that are going to cost me. All money for traveling and anything else I do for this channel comes out of my pockets. I don't have to remind you that the YouTube adpocalypse has pretty much dried up most of the funding from ads. Not just here, but all over YouTube. Goodbye. Goodbye.